Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to set up our new FT Aura Light board in a conventional fixed wing airplane. Now, if you haven't heard about the FT Aura Light or the FT Aura Light 5, uh, this is a result of a great partnership between Flex Innovations and Flight Test. We have over a year of work into this to basically create a board specifically designed for aircraft that not only has all the great features that the Aura systems have, the gyro stabilization, three axis gyros, real easy programmability, but also something that can also be used as a beginning trainer tool without losing the heart and the spirit of how the plane flies. We're really proud to say this is now available, but also there's some really cool basic features that enables you to basically just take it out of the package and put it right into the airplane without the use of any computer. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to set that up on a fixed wing, not only a fixed wing, but our new DHC2 Beaver. The really cool thing about this board is this can go on any size of our airplanes, all the way down to the Mighty Minis and the Micros that you see here, all the way up to our largest plane. All you're gonna need is the FT Aura Light Board, a satellite of the protocol of your choosing. We're gonna use the Spectrum in this, but if you are an FR Sky fan, you can use that as well. Your transmitter and a battery, and of course the airplane. Now we do have this quick start guide. Everything I'm gonna be sharing with this about out of the box setup is actually in this personal guide, but also check out our website, flighttest.com slash ftora5. That's gonna be where we're gonna have our library of all the videos that you're seeing like this one, but also future profiles specifically designed for airplanes. All right, let's get our materials in order, we'll get started. So the first thing we wanna do is put our attention towards a transmitter. For our travels on our transmitter, specifically with Spectrum, we're gonna adjust our aileron, elevator, and rudder to 125% uh, travel each direction. We're also gonna take our gear switch from the two position switch on the back left to a three position switch of your choosing. I like to use a uh, switch C right here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. And a really cool thing about the Aura system is all the programmability, all the trims, all the mixes, all that is in your board, which means you can basically have a dumb setup on your transmitter and just bind to different ones. So as you can see here, I just named this FT Aura. This is gonna serve whether I'm flying the Beaver, the new Widgeon, our Kit Fox, or any of our foam board airplanes like John's Master Series. So this will all work off of one and you don't have to worry about changing radios back and forth, but it also means you can have a very simple radio, and as long as you can make your gear switch on a three position, you'll get the full ability of the Aura system. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go to servo setup, we're gonna go to travel, we're gonna change this to 125. 125. And 125. Our quad friends probably have a better understanding of why this is important, but this just gives you the full resolution the Aura has to offer. I'm also gonna go down here to System Setup, hit Yes. Go down to Channel Assign. Go to Next. And where it says Gear, I'm just gonna turn that to C. Now that I've selected that, I'm gonna hit back. And you're gonna see if I go over to monitor, my gear selector is in C. Now that our radio is set up, we're gonna put our attention towards putting the board in the plane. All right, just for safety, we're gonna go ahead and remove our prop. It's always a good idea if you're doing anything with electronics. Also, you're starting to see why we're opening up our micros here. We always wanted this to be able to fit our board. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my throttle out. And specifically for this beaver here, we're gonna go ahead and mount the board right on this open real estate right here. Now when we're mounting the board, it's really important for orientation. We can change this orientation any way we want, but to do so, we're gonna to have to use the computer. If you look at this little Space Invaders uh, rocket ship here, that's gonna go ahead and face forward towards the motor. Our pins are gonna be in the back. We're gonna to wanna to make sure we can access the trim and the bind button, and also our satellite port. And speaking of satellite, let's go ahead and get our satellite ready. Now the cool thing about this is if you're using a conventional uh, Spectrum receiver, this is only about two grams heavier than the whole setup. And if you decase this or use an FR Sky, it's gonna be even lighter. Okay. Included in our little pack, we have actually two pieces of, uh, of sticky back tape. The one thing that I like to do is I like to hold on to the center section here because I'm gonna use that to mount our Spectrum receiver. But also when we put this on, we could kind of cut around that and have it mounted this way, but I really like to have my stickiness kind of grabbing all four corners. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut a little relief. You don't have to if you don't want to. All right, we got our little notch here. I'm simply gonna go ahead and peel the back off. 
Now I can line this up nice and centered, just as you see right here. Now it's really important here when you put your board on that it sticks really well. It's not gonna pop off and go even, so make sure you put nice even pressure all the way around it. There we go. Our next step is we'll go ahead and mount this. Again, we want the orientation of the board facing forward, so this little, these two ports here, are going to face forward. Our servo ports are going to be in the back. Again, we're going to take advantage of all the open rail seat that we have here. We even have room in this cavity here to be able to put our, our plug in if we want to do any kind of programming or profile uploads. We'll just press that down like you see here. And just to make things easy, I'm going to go ahead and get our spectrum receiver out of the way here. Again, you can use any satellite receiver you want. We have in uh, and the details of all the different protocols it'll accept, but flexibility and versatility is really important to us. We don't want people to only be able to fly off of a certain type of receiver. All right, I'm just gonna pass this through here. I think a really good spot for this will be right on the sidewall right here. All right, now that we have our board in, our next step is to plug our servos in. Now you're gonna see on the quick start manual, it's a little bit easier to see, but we actually have a little horseshoe signal. That stands for signal. And then we have our positive and our negative, and then also S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5. Our first port's gonna be the throttle with our signal on the top. So we'll go ahead and just take this right through here. And again, this process is the exact same whether you're doing a simple cub, a scout, a sea duck, new beaver adventure, any of those planes. There we go. See my signals on the top, plugged into S1. Our next two ports are gonna be our aileron ports. Now since I have this wide together, I can pick either one of these two ports. I'm gonna go ahead and save that slot for when I put the uh, wing on. But our next port after that is gonna be in port number four, and that's gonna be our elevator. So I'm just gonna see which one are, is our elevator. It's this one right here. Signal wire again going forward. That's gonna go into port number four. And our final port is gonna be the rudder, and that'll be going into port number five. Once again, we can actually configure our ports any way we want through the computer. This is just for out of the box setup to get you started. Okay, now that we have our ports, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of dress this up a little bit. I'm gonna get my ESC back where it's supposed to be. I'm gonna kind of give these a little bit of a twist and get them dressed up. I'll just tuck them to the side right here. Always make sure that you keep your wires out of the way of your servos and that your servos have full travel, which they do. Okay. To make things just a little bit easier, I'm gonna go ahead and just put an extension on here so I can access the board and at the same time move things around a bit. This part is not necessary, uh, but it'll just help me kind of keep things open to show you how it hooks up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug that in right there and then we'll plug this into our aileron. There we go. Now that we have all that done, I'm gonna go ahead and power up the airplane and bind it to my radio. So props are off. We we'll wanna plug this in. We have power to the board, which is a good thing. After about 15 seconds or so, you're gonna see this little guy flashing, saying it's in bind mode. There it is. We're gonna bind it to the radio. Typically, you gotta hold this about four or five feet away from the actual airplane for it to properly bind. If you notice that it's not binding, it could be because you're right next to it. There we go. You can see we have our throttle, we have our controls. And you're gonna notice some of my controls are backwards, mainly my ailerons and my rudder. So this is a really cool part of the setup here because we need no computers and no adjustments on the radios. It's all gonna be done through two buttons and stick movements here. Make sure if you don't follow anything I'm saying, check out this guide right here because it's gonna spell out exactly how I'm communicating it. Great folks at Flex did a really good job with this quick start guide. Now to enter into basic setup without programming, all we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down our bind and our trim button. Now to enter into this mode, we're gonna go ahead and press with our fingers or our stick or our servo port, both these buttons, and then we're gonna hold that until the LED turns green. We're gonna hold both these down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. We can go ahead and we can change the direction. We can also check our gyros at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosely 
put this plane kind of back together and I'm gonna go ahead and tilt it. So when I tilt it up, we see the elevator react up. Now we gotta go past about a 45 degree angle to see it. It's gonna be an extreme reaction. The elevator's pushing down. So you notice that the elevator was absolutely right on the direction. Now when I go with my aileron, you're gonna notice that the aileron goes the wrong direction. If we tilt it to the right, the aileron should react by going to the left, but it's actually given more right, which means my direction and my gyros are backwards. Now because our aileron direction and also the gyros are backwards, all we need to do to fix this is go to our aileron port right here, push it one direction all the way and count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six. There it is. Now our servos are moving in the right direction to our control input, but also our gyros move in the right direction too. So make sure whenever you test these, you gotta take it past the 45 and you're gonna see an extreme response. And that's just gonna be saying, this is how it would react in this situation. Now our last one is our rudder. And you can see that our rudder is backwards as well. So again, all we need to do is go to our rudder port. We're gonna hold this until we see a reaction from it. Doesn't matter which way you go. One, two, three. And there it is. So now when we yaw this, the reaction is the right direction. So now that all our gyros are working properly, there's one more setting if you're a beginner specifically that you may want to activate and that's six axis mode. So by activating six axis mode, what it'll do is when you move to position one here, which is basically in the center, it'll then enable your six axis beginner mode. The top is no gyros, just basically you're flying it as if it's on a receiver. The bottom one is high gyro, high gain aerobatic mode with no six axis. Enabling the middle mode will take it from a low gain three axis to a low gain six axis, which means level assist. So to do this, all we simply need to do is we need to hold down the bind button until we see it turn blue. So I'll just use the screwdriver here. We'll hold this down. One, two, three. There it is. So those two pulses of the controls means that you now enable six axis mode on the center toggle. So we checked all our controls, everything is working properly. You're gonna also notice that we don't have throttle response. That's because when we're in this mode, they disable the throttle. To get out of this mode, all we do is we go dead and we press both buttons one more time. One, two, three, four, five. There we go, we'll release. The blue flashing light means it's rebooting. And we are reset. So let's go ahead and check out each of our individual modes with our, uh, our gear channel selected to the zero port on our three position all the way up. We should be able to rock this around and see no reactions at all. When I slip to the middle, you're gonna see that it's actually in six axis mode. And the way we can tell is as I tilt it up, this aileron is staying up and saying, I want you to go back to level for me. Same thing with our elevator pitch control. There we go. On our bottom one, what we should see when we wiggle this back and forth is a momentary reaction. This is as if the wind's hitting it. So it's trying to kind of take out the wind effect, but it's still letting you bank it any which way you want. And if you leave the sticks go at the center, it'll keep in that angle. This basically is three axis mode. So everything's working. We're moving it. We're seeing the controls work the right way. We're ready to go out and fly it. Our plane is now set up, but there's a very important additional step that you're gonna to need to know, and that's out in the flying field. That video is gonna be right here. That's gonna show you how to tune and how to trim and how to lock those trims in into your control board so you don't have to rely on your radio anymore. Along with that, please do us a favor, hit that subscribe bell because we're gonna have lots more videos around the FT Aura 5 showing you how to do things like profile uploads, Elevon wing mixing, a whole bunch of other great features. This board is absolutely incredible and it's gonna be around for a long time. We wanna share with you all the cool features. See you next time.